Another edition of Facebook Live. This is Dr. Stephen Mandel coming to you from Ketamine Clinics of Los Angeles. As you can see from the background, we're returned to Los Angeles from our visit last week at Mammoth Mountain. Uh, we're here in our clinic and we've just had a very full day. We have a couple of patients left after this broadcast. Uh, I wanted to take 10 minutes to speak with you. Uh, Today, we are honoring the memory of a family member who passed away quite suddenly when she hit a tree at 90 miles an hour. It's one of the things people ask me questions. It's one of the reasons I got involved in this. When I finished college, I went to graduate school in clinical psychology. I had been a psych major. I had a full scholarship for clinical psychology at the University of Cincinnati. And I studied there for four years and I completed all of my work toward my dissertation, including my pilot project, everything but the dissertation itself. While I was writing it, I got the opportunity to go to medical school at USC School of Medicine. It was now called the Keck School of Medicine. And I went there. Uh, it was a wonderful place to go. Uh, Los Angeles was amazing. The teachers I had at USC were wonderful. and. Um, it was a new curriculum approach to teaching medicine. So we learned medicine not by uh, little factoids that we had to string together, but by an integrated approach to an organ system study. Uh, we brought pharmacology and physiology and uh, pathology to each organ system. It was fascinating. I loved it. Uh, when I completed medical school, I did an internship in internal medicine at LA County General Hospital. And then I went on to Mass General for a residency in anesthesiology. I worked in anesthesiology for quite some time. I went, completed my residency at USC, I'm sorry, at UCLA and the Center for the Health Sciences. Um, came out and did anesthesia. After uh, doing anesthesia in the hospital for a long time, I branched out doing mobile anesthesia and served plastic surgeons and dentists and podiatrists and radiologists all over town in addition to continuing our hospital practice. But I always continued to be interested in mood disorders. And as I alluded when I started, um, my interest in mood disorders was more than academic. I had situations in my own family that were very troubling and uh, very preoccupying and kept my attention on mood disorders even though I was doing anesthesia. When ketamine came out as a, an amazing uh, new treatment for mood disorders, uh, I was really on board with that and I transitioned my practice to doing infusions for depression and, and uh, suicidality and chronic pain as well. A particular kind of pain called uh, complex uh, regional pain. It's complex regional pain syndrome is a different kind of pain than anatomic pain. Anatomic pain responds well to ketamine only as long as the ketamine is present. It doesn't actually treat the source of the pain. It covers it like any other analgesic. But um, with complex regional pain syndrome. The old description of this is uh, phantom limb pain or uh, leaf reflex sympathetic dystrophy. This kind of pain responds very well to ketamine, particularly if given shortly after the syndrome develops, and it can actually eliminate it and eliminate the pain. The, the archetypical pain that I'm talking about in contrast to anatomic pain is phantom limb pain. A person suffers, suffers an amputation and subsequently has pain in that limb. Well, that limb isn't there. What are they talking about? They're hurting. They are really suffering. And there may be skin changes in the stump of what's left of that limb. Uh, this was very perplexing for a long time. We still don't fully understand it. But ketamine helps this syndrome tremendously. It may actually cure it. If not, it helps it a lot. 
and it seems to do so, so far as we understand, by actually kind of resetting central pain processing, much the way you might uh, in, a, in a computer that had just gone wonky on you, you might just reboot it to sort of reset everything to a neutral level. Ketamine appears to do that in the central nervous system for complex regional pain syndrome. For depression, it seems to work by actually causing new growth in the brain. Uh, it does this via the AMPA neurohumor and the uh, elaboration of brain-derived neurotropic factor. And that actually causes growth in areas of the brain that we haven't seen this in humans, but in, in laboratory models, uh, actually causes growth of the brain. Uh, new connections are made, and there's actually an increase in bulk in certain areas. The, this afternoon, I also wanted to talk about people call in or type in about what's wrong with ketamine? What will it do to hurt me? We don't know of any long-term side effects of ketamine. None. Um, every once in a while you hear about ketamine causing bladder problems. Well, ketamine is associated with bladder problems among those who abuse it. These people are taking literally 20 to 50 times what we give in the clinic. And they're not taking it for a few days or a few weeks. They're taking it for years. Somewhere between 20 and 50 percent of those people, if they continue to use ketamine in high doses daily, develop bladder problems or kidney problems. So that can happen. So when I say ketamine has no long-term adverse side effects, I mean ketamine given for therapeutic purposes in a clinic. I don't mean among the community of abusers who are literally using 10 to 20 times daily for years. And not all of them have problems either. Somewhere between 20 and 50% of them have problems. Many of those problems, if the patients are willing to stop using ketamine, can be treated and do resolve. But this is um, really something brought up by detractors. It has nothing to do with the treatment of ketamine for depression and suicidality. I, I get almost weary of hearing this every week, that ketamine is addictive and ketamine can cause bladder problems. Ketamine is not addictive any more than food is addictive. Yes, some people really become uh, fixated on food as a solution to all their problems. This can happen with ketamine also. But it's not intrinsically addictive the way opiates are, the way nicotine is the way alcohol is. Suicide is fatal. Ketamine might cause some people problems. Which would you choose for the people you love? Thanks very much for coming to see me again today. I hope you'll call or write in, and I hope to see you again next week. 3 p.m. Pacific time on Friday. That will be the 10th of March. I look forward to seeing you then.